Hello, it's nice to be with you again. This week, I'm going to introduce you to Ali. He's a hamster, a golden hamster. Perhaps you've got one of your own. If you're just about to buy a hamster, the best thing is to buy a very, very young one. Go to a good pet shop and check and make sure that it's a really young hamster. And only buy one, unless you intend to breed. And if you do, always keep one in a cage completely on its own. Ali's a golden hamster, but there are lots of other colours, so you don't have to stick to that one colour. Once you've got your young hamster and you've got him at home, it's very important to keep getting used to you as quickly as possible. So you've got to handle him a lot so that he knows your sense of smell. You see, hamsters are very, very short-sighted. And what they'll do is, unless they know you, they'll probably bite your finger first and then find out who you are later. So when you first get your hamster, be very, very gentle with him and stroke him and let him get used to you. And of course, Ali here is not interested in me at all. He's too busy filling up his pouches with food. You see here, two little fat things on the side of his face. That's not what he looks like all the time. He's absolutely full of food, and he's going into his bed now to hide it. In this type of cage that we've got here, it's a nice big cage, and really it's the best that you can do for your hamster is buy the biggest cage possible. Come on, Aline, let's see your bed. There he is. Come on out, good boy and I'll let you see inside his bed. What he's doing now is emptying his pouches and hiding the food right down in the bottom of the bed. In the bottom of the cage here, we've got sawdust, and we, use, uh, we change this sawdust a couple of times a week and keep it nice and clean, because hamsters have a very clean habit. They choose one little corner of the cage, and they use that as their toilet, so it's nice and easy for you to clean that one little corner out every day. And the rest of the cage, you can take to pieces and wash completely, and clean it twice a week. Also in the cage, come on out, Ali, and let's have a look. Come on, good boy. He doesn't want to come out now. There you see, his pouches are now empty. He's left all the food inside the bed, and now he's coming out looking for more. And so that he doesn't run away, we better put the top on. In you go. Now inside the cage as well, this here is an exercise wheel, and that goes round and round. Ali gets inside and runs round and round and round. An exercise is very important. Ali, being a hamster, is nocturnal. This means that he wakes up in the night and does everything that other animals do during the day. So if you're trying to sleep and Ali's going round and round in his wheel, it can make quite a lot of noise. So what I do is put a little knob of butter just on the inside of the wheel, and that makes it quite noise-free, and Ali spends half the night licking off the butter and really enjoys it. And, of course, it doesn't do him very much harm. Also, as far as exercise is concerned, especially if you've got a normal cage like that, a very small one, it's important that your hamster can be let out to do other things. So I've made up this. This looks like something out of Star Wars, and it's made out of toilet roll holders and kitchen roll holders. And we just stick them all together, and I put this in a big box, and Ali runs in and out, one end and out of the other, and round and round, and spends ages tearing up the cardboard into little pieces. And when he's made a mess of one, then I can make him another one. Also, to keep his teeth in good condition, it's very important that your hamster has in his cage some wood. Just a piece of twig off, off any, any tree that isn't poisonous, and he will gnaw away at this piece of wood, and that'll make his teeth grow straight and strong. Also on the side of the cage, we've got a water bottle. Now, as part from the food that you give your hamster, it's very important that he can have fresh water every day. And this is the best way to do it. See, this way, if, it's, if it was in a dish, he would run in and out of it and get it all dirty. But this way, it keeps nice and clean. It's in the bottle, we change it every day, and he just comes up to the bottle and drinks out of this end here by sucking against it and little drops come out. And it's nice and fresh and he really drinks quite a lot for a very small animal. I'm caught on the cage here. Hello, Ali. Good boy. Now, cage cleaning is very important, as I said, but another important thing for animals, uh, for hamsters, is keeping them nice and warm. You see, a hamster comes from a hot country, and he doesn't like to get really, really cold. So we, we keep him in the room where we live, and this way, if it gets really cold at night, outside he's going to keep nice and warm inside. On the table here I've got a selection of some of the food that I give to Ali. This is a, a hamster mix that you can buy from the pet shop 
and it's a mixture of all different kinds of seeds. And we've got different types of green food and millet spray and apple and carrot. All of these things just given little portions at a time because as you've seen, he tends to hide everything in his bed, so it's best if it's fresh food to just give him a little bit that he can eat at once. Also, he, we've got some very special treats that you can get him if you've got some extra pocket money. This, some cheese-flavoured crunchies and special a hamster treat, which he really, really loves, but he only gets that once a week. Now here's a story about a hamster, very like the little one you've just seen. His name was Benji, and he lived with a little boy called John. John was very kind to Benji, and he made sure that Benji was well fed and kept his cage nice and clean, with lots of fresh straw and fresh water every day. Benji was very happy, especially when John opened the cage door and let him run round the sitting room. It was so exciting. There were lots of big comfy chairs, pictures, carpets, and a table where John and his family used to have their tea. The tea table was of special interest to Benji because sometimes when John and his mother were having tea, John would take a little piece of currant cake and give it to Benji. Benji loved currant cake. He always hoped he would get some every day. Though of course, they didn't have currant cake every day. It was really only for special occasions, like birthdays or when visitors called. One day, a visitor was due to arrive. It was John's Auntie Mary. Oh, thought Benji to himself, perhaps we'll have currant cake for tea, and perhaps John will remember to give me a piece. Benji waited and watched to see what John's mummy would put on the table at tea time. It seemed ages. But finally, in she came with a tray full of sandwiches, jam tarts, and yes, a beautiful big currant cake. It looked lovely. John came in too and tickled Benji's whiskers through the cage. Benji loved having his whiskers tickled, so John took him out of the cage so he could really stroke him properly. Just then, the doorbell rang, and John's mother called from the kitchen. Oh, John, that must be Auntie Mary. Go and let her in, will you? John popped Benji back into the cage, but he was in such a hurry to see Aunt Mary that he didn't close the cage door properly. Benji waited for John to come back. It seemed that no one was in a hurry for tea. Soon, he heard voices in the garden. And being a curious little hamster, he decided to push open the cage door and get out onto the windowsill and see what they were all doing. He got out in no time at all and was soon looking out of the window into the garden. Aunt Mary, John and his mother were strolling along looking at the flowers. No one seemed to care about the tea anymore. Benji looked at the currant cake. It really was a beauty. He decided to try and take one currant before he went back into his cage. He was sure that one little currant wouldn't be missed. In fact, he thought he could take two or three if he was really careful. He just hoped John wouldn't come back too quickly. Well, it was almost ten minutes later before the grown-ups decided to come in for tea. John joined them and sat down to eat a sandwich whilst his mother poured the tea. While she was pouring, they heard a funny little noise, halfway between a squeak and a snort. They all looked at each other. They'd never heard a noise quite like it before. Then they heard it again. It seemed to come from the cake. John's mother was quite worried who ever heard of a squeaking currant cake? She pulled the plate over to get a better look, and then she heard the same noise again. No doubt about it, it was coming from the cake. Then John noticed a small hole in the side. Look, he said, I think there's something inside. Auntie Mary leaned forward and lifted the cake right up from the plate. Well, what a shock they all had. The inside of the cake had all been gobbled up. Only the outside was left. And there, in the middle of the plate, sound asleep, was guess who? Benji. He'd had more than three currants. He'd eaten practically the whole cake. His pouches were full, and so was his tummy. 
He was so fat he couldn't move. John's mother was quite cross at first. After all, John should have taken more care about shutting the cage door. Suppose Benji hadn't seen the cake. He might have gone out and been lost forever. How dreadful. In the end, they decided it was far better that Benji ate the cake than that. So all's well that ends well. And that's the end of today's story. But I'll be back next week with some more animals. So don't forget to join me, will you? Bye-bye for now. Thank you.